The flight deck of an aircraft carrier is one of the most dangerous places in the world, and the lessons of our past are filled with tragic events that prove this point. In recent years, many improvements in the flight deck equipment, firefighting gear, and personal protective devices have made this workplace cleaner, better, and safer, but sailors still can be at risk. The Workplace Aboard an aircraft carrier, the flight deck serves as the workplace for several hundred sailors. Although it can be a dangerous place, you will be safe, provided you follow the rules. Use common sense and make operational time critical management a part of your everyday routine. You'll find an aircraft taxi around the deck, elevators going up and down, maintainers working on aircraft, jets roaring as they prepare for takeoff, and others landing with timely precision. How well you know the flight deck, the dangers, and the safe areas will dictate the level of risk you face. Know how the deck works. When you hear the 5MC scream, watch out, turning a hornet, take a look, evaluate your options, and take action to stay safe. When the air boss tells you to roll down your sleeves, check your flow coats, goggles down, start them up, you want to be ready and you want to know the safe areas on the flight deck and how the deck flows. Let's take a look at the flight deck starting at the bow. There are six distinct areas on the bow, catapults one and two, and the one, two, three, and four row. Working back from the bow, the area where the angle deck meets the bow is called the crotch. Across the deck you have JBDs one and two, and on the far side, near the navigational pole, is the area called the point. These areas of the flight deck can be some of the most hectic areas of the flight deck. You'll see aircraft taxiing up to the cats, the JBDs will raise, and the jets get catapulted off the deck. You notice some red and white lines on the bow. These are the, called the safe shot lines. Never step across these lines when aircraft are in tension. An aircraft being launched will kill you, should you stray across these lines during a launch. The adage, keep your head on a swivel, is appropriate here and almost anywhere on the flight deck. Working aft on the starboard side, you'll find elevators 1 and 2. This general area is called the corral. Inboard of the corral is an area called the street. And just like the streets in a city, traffic will flow through this area. Next is a six pack. The area is called the six pack because you normally will find six aircraft parked in this area. Working aft the six pack and in front of the island, you have the Hummer and Hilo holes. That's where we park the E2C and several H60 Helos. Behind the island is the bomb farm, and after the island, you'll find the junkyard. Just as the name implies, a lot of gear gets stored there. You'll hear calls to get the junkyard cleaned up and not to store just anything back there. As you work back toward the fantail, you first reach elevator 3, and behind it, the patio. Beginning at the crotch and running all the way through the six-pack, Hummer and heel holes, junkyard, L3, and the patio, you'll notice a red and white line. The line is called the foul line, and it marks the beginning of the landing area, or the area commonly called the L.A., during recovery operations, you never cross this line without specific guidance to do so, and you cross aft of the one wire, and only after receiving a signal to do so from the arresting gear officer. As you cross the LA, you'll see safe shot lines for catapults 3 and 4. Working aft, you'll see the JBDs and the port side foul line, then L4 and a small piece of flight deck called the finger, and then the LSO platform. On occasion, aircraft will be parked near or on the finger in L4 area. During landing operations, it's imperative that you only cross the LA after getting approval to do so from the AGO. You should cross after the number one wire and should cross as quickly as possible. The latest printed version of the Flight Deck Awareness Guide provides the standard procedures for crossing the LA. Read and heed these rules. The People Many people refer to the rainbow of colors that are apparent on the flight deck. These color cranials, float coats, and jerseys signify specific duties and responsibilities. Let's take a look at some of the people who make the flight deck their workplace. Let's start in the tower. The air officer, or more commonly referred to as the air boss, or simply boss, supervises and directs the overall flight deck operations. The assistant air officer, or mini boss, assists the air boss. Yellow shirts. The main function of each is the movement and handling of aircraft around the flight and hangar decks. 
The aircraft handling officer, or simply handler, supervises the day-to-day -day operations on the flight deck. Sitting in flight deck control, the handler is involved in every aspect of the movement of aircraft and equipment on deck. The flight deck officer is responsible for the safe operations, training of personnel, and the readiness of aircraft handling support equipment, and overall maintenance and material condition of the flight deck. The catapult officers or shooters are directly responsible for the safety of all aircraft launch operations. You'll notice that the shooters wear yellow shirts and vest in a green cranial with three orange stripes. The aircraft crash and salvage officer or air bosun supervises the crash crews and air wing personnel in aircraft firefighting and crash and salvage operations. The arresting gear officer or the hook reports to the air balls via the handler and is responsible for the safety and efficient operations of the recovery equipment and crew during recovery operations. The hook wears a yellow shirt, vest, and green helmet with three orange stripes. Plane directors also wear yellow and they provide visual signals to air crew while directing their aircraft during taxi and hookup operations. They also ensure the safe movement of aircraft during towing and elevator operations. White jerseys. Five different groups of people wear the white jerseys. Safety officers and personnel are responsible for the overall safety of flight deck operations. They also have a green cross on their vest for easy identification. The air transport officer coordinates the loading and unloading and movement of all air cargo and passengers. Land and signal officers ensure each aircraft remains within safe perimeters during landing approach through radio communications and light signals. They initiate the wave off of aircraft that are outside the safe landing envelope. Squadron plane inspectors or troubleshooters wear white jerseys and vests with a checkerboard pattern. They wear green cranials and are responsible for the safety inspection of aircraft. Medical personnel provide immediate medical assistance and treatment to any flight deck personnel casualties. A large red cross on the front and back of their jerseys makes it easy to identify them. Aircraft handling chalk crewmen. These blue shirts are responsible for securing all aircraft with wheel chalks and chains. They also operate in handling equipment for moving and starting aircraft. The Tractor King wears a yellow jersey and blue vest and a blue cranial for easy identification. Elevator operators run the four elevators that allow the movement of aircraft to and from the hangar deck. They wear white cranials. Red jerseys. Five different groups of people wear red jerseys. Crash and salvage personnel are the flight deck fire department, responsible for the immediate response to fires and the rescue of personnel on the flight deck. They operate all mobile firefighting and crash and salvage equipment. Ordnance officers are responsible for the movement, handling, and loading of aircraft ordnance. CAG arm and D-arm team members also wear red, and they are assigned to the carrier air wing and are responsible for arming and de-arming weapons. Explosive Ordnance Disposal Officer and Crew Members dispose of, disarm, and neutralize defective ordnance. They have EOD printed on the front and back of their jerseys. Ordnance Handlers or BB Stackers move, load, and unload ordnance and weapon systems on aircraft. Purple Jerseys or simply Grapes fuel and defuel aircraft. They also take fuel samples and test them to make sure that the fuel is safe for aircraft use. They maintain shipboard aviation fuel systems also. Green jerseys. By far the most wide ranging color jerseys are green. At least 13 different groups wear this color. Catapult safety observers are the direct representative of the launching officer and make sure people follow the proper procedures and precautions during launches. The topside safety petty officers ensure that the holdbacks and repeatable release assemblies are installed and that the aircraft's launch bar is seated in the shuttle spreader. They are the last people to exit from under the aircraft. Holdback bar personnel install holdbacks and repeatable release assemblies and verify positioning of this equipment. The center deck operator communicates with catapult control stations, relaying the catapult selection valve settings for the launching officer. 
The jet blast deflector operator raises and lowers the JBDs. The JBD prevents jet blast from hitting personnel and aircraft of the catapult launching area. The weightboard operator verifies the aircraft gross weight with the pilot prior to launch. The arresting gear topside petty officer supervises the arresting gear topside crew. They are responsible to the AGO for making sure arresting gear equipment is in good working condition. The deck edge operator retracts the arresting gear wire after recovery of each aircraft and is stationed in the catwalk. Hook runners ensure cross deck pendant and purchase cables have been disengaged from the aircraft tail hook and when the landing area is clear they give the retract signal to the deck edge operator. Deck checkers make sure the landing area is FOD free, the wire is in the position for aircraft recovery and all personnel are clear of the landing area. Aircraft maintenance crewmen or maintainers make sure that the aircraft are repaired and ready for taxi and launch. The Helicopter Landing Signal Enlistment LSEs, directs the takeoff and landing of all helicopters using hand signals. The LSC wears a red helmet. Photographers capture images and video of the flight deck operations like much of what you've seen already in this video. Brown jerseys are the plane captains who make sure aircraft are inspected and serviced before and after each flight. They are responsible for the cleanliness and general condition of each aircraft. They also supervise ground starting procedures and ride brakes in their aircraft when moved. Special drills and procedures for crossing the landing area. Barricade drills. In case of emergency when aircraft must recover on board and cannot make a normal arrestment, the barricade must be rigged. This process takes the effort of the entire flight deck crew. The barricade must be removed from its storage area on the starboard side of the ship in the vicinity of the junkyard. The barricade is stretched out, untangled, and rigged for the recovering aircraft. The drills are done continuously throughout the workup and deployment cycle. They are required to ensure the barricade is safely rigged. Rigging the Movilis. Should the ship's regular landing equipment fail, the ship must respond and provide emergency lighting to recover aircraft. The Movilis is rigged, then tested, and then disassembled. Crossing the flight deck. For many years, different carriers used slightly different signals for crossing the flight deck. One sailor faced the embarrassment of crossing the deck in front of a recovering aircraft because she thought the signal to cross had been given. The signal was used on her last ship, but it was different on this one. She was called to see the air boss and explain the situation. She also wrote a story for Mech Magazine. The Naval Safety Center ABs brought the situation to the attention of the airline handling team, and the procedures were standardized. In the clips you're watching, you'll see the AGO giving sailors a signal to cross the LA safely. Do not cross unless you see this signal. And when you cross, go aft of the one wire. It will keep you safe. While on the subject of wires, another hazard to avoid is wire snapback. When the aircraft recovers, the wire will rebound a couple of feet before coming to rest. If you're too close, like the guy in this clip, the wire can snap back and knock you on your butt. Fire drills. One of the most practiced drills on the flight deck and hangar deck is the fire drill. The ship constantly practices to make sure the ship is able to respond quickly and correctly in case of a catastrophe. There have been many cases in the past where the crew has had to respond. The Enterprise, Forrestal, and the Ariskany come to mind. But the clip you're watching now is from the USS Lexington. A T-2 Buckeye crashes into the tower. You see sailors, first, running to save their lives. But watch as they realize they have survived, and they instinctively head toward the fire hoses. You must put out the fire to save the ship. That's why we practice these drills, and that's why you must participate. Don't head for the catwalks in the shop. That attitude won't save the ship when the real thing happened. Flight deck marking and firefighting equipment. Before you can fight the fire or handle it, other emergencies on deck, you need to know the equipment involved and where and how to find it. One easy way, whether on a hangar or flight deck, is to look for markings on the bulkhead or the deck edge scupper. Fire extinguishers, safety equipment, and even bomb disposal chutes are clearly marked. Tour the flight deck, look for these markings, and become familiar with the locations of this equipment. 
it could save your life and that of your shipmates. Foreign Object Damage, also known as FOD. FOD walkdowns are conducted prior to and after flight operations. You may be called upon to participate. FOD walkdowns mitigate the damage to aircraft and possible loss of life. Personal Protective Equipment, PPE, will help prevent personal injuries from hazards such as turning aircraft, jet exhaust, prop and helo wash, excessive noises, tail hooks, and many other hazards. Your PPE consists of the following. The flight deck helmet or cranial with double hearing protection. Over the years, many sailors and marines have damaged or even lost their hearing from not wearing the proper hearing protection. Goggles, flow coat, the flight deck jersey, fire retardant gloves, and your flight deck boots that must be steel toed. When worn properly, PP will minimize your chances of being injured. We have provided you with the necessary tools to prevent personal injuries and also improve your situational awareness in the many hazards you will encounter on the flight deck. Remember the old adage, keep your head on a swivel. Good luck and stay safe.